Hi everyone, today I'll be demonstrating how to integrate native ads using Flurry and Swift. In order to display the functionality of native ads, I'll be using a project skeleton containing a pre-built table view controller along with a custom cell class, as well as an application containing some built-in content. If you'd like to follow along, I've provided a link in the description of this video containing both the project skeleton as well as the completed app. Before we begin integrating native ads, let's take a look at the sample app. Here we have two table cell rows consisting of labels, image views, and a description. By the end of this video, we'll have an application consisting of both personal content mixed in with native ads in a single stream. Our first step in the Spang native ads is to bring in the required Flurry SDK files. To do so, we'll head up to File, Add Files to Project, we'll drag in the SDK files, check copy items if needed, and click Add. Next up, we'll create an Objective-C bridging header file in order to use the Flurry SDK. We'll go to File, New, File. Under iOS Source, we'll click Header File and click Next. And here I'll name it StreamTest-BridgingHeader.h, where StreamTest is the name of this app. And I'll check StreamTest under Targets. Go ahead and save it. And in this bridging header file, we'll import any of the Flurry header files we dragged in earlier. And I'll use a code snippet for brevity. So here are our Flurry SDK files. Next, we'll go into our project root. In build settings, we'll search for Swift compiler. Next to Objective-C bridging header, we'll put in the path to that bridging header file, which is located at streamtest slash streamtest dash bridging header dot h. Next, we'll head over to build phases. We'll click link binary with libraries, and we'll click the plus sign. And here we'll bring in any frameworks that Flurry needs in order to serve ads. The first of those being the ad support that framework, followed by AV Foundation that framework, Core Graphics that framework and Core Media, followed by libz lib, Media Player that framework, Store Kit and System Configuration that framework, and lastly UI Kit that framework. Let's go ahead and add them. Now with our configurations out of the way. Let's head over to our app delegate.swift. Here we'll start a new Flurry session by using the method flurry.startSession and we'll pass in our API key. For those following along, you're welcome to use my own API key here for ad integration testing. Next, we'll head over to our viewcontroller.swift. Up here we'll add the Flurry add native delegate to our viewcontroller class and we'll initialize our ad space here. Let native add equal to flurry add native where space will be streamy and streamy is the name of my own ad space which I've configured to have a placement of stream and the ad type is set to detailed card on the flurry dev portal. Creating an ad space on the flurry developer portal will take roughly 20 minutes to activate so you may use the ad space in this video for testing integration of native ads in your own application. Next, we'll fetch an ad within our view that load method. To do so, we'll do native add dot add delegate and be set to self. Native add dot view controller for presentation will also be set to self. And lastly, we'll do native add dot fetch add. Once the fetch add method receives a response from the server, it will trigger a callback function called add native did fetch add, which will contain the add assets. We'll go ahead and implement this callback function in order to access this data. So down here we'll do add native did fetch add, and the code here will be var asset is equal to native add.asset list, which is the properties that will make up our native add. Here we'll do self.table data dot append asset where table data is an array which will contain all native ad assets. And next we'll do in self.table view dot reload data. And this will refresh our table row contents every time new data comes in. Next, in our table view, number of rows and section method, I'll change this to have three rows. And in our table view self for row at index path method, I'll change this here to two. 
we'll just write a placeholder for our native ad. And we'll go ahead and run our application to see how it looks currently. Here we still have our content, but now we have a default cell which is going to be placed right in between our pre-existing content. So let's go ahead and display our native ad. Back in the code, first we'll check if self.tableData.count is greater than zero. Here we check if table data is actually populated with data. The reason for this is because fetching an ad is an asynchronous task. And at the initial rendering of our table, there is no table data. So if we do have some ad data, we'll go ahead and do for var index is equal to zero. Index is less than self dot table data. We'll iterate over the first element dot count index plus plus. And here we'll actually grab our add assets. We'll do var new asset, which is of type any object. And we'll set that equal to self dot table data first index. And now we'll iterate over the value of index itself. And now we'll check all the properties of our ad to display a headline, a description, an image, a branding logo, and the sponsor name. So to do that, we'll do if new asset dot name is equal to headline. We'll do cell dot stream title label dot text is equal to new asset dot value. Next if new asset dot name is equal to summary we'll do cell dot stream description label dot text is equal to new asset dot value next let's go ahead and display a high quality image of our ad if new asset dot name is equal to sec hq image we'll do let url which is of type nsurl, be equal to nsurl with the string being set to new asset dot value. If let actual url equal to url, let the image data be equal to ns data with the contents of url being set to actual url. If this was all successful, we'll do if let actual image data be equal to image data and here we'll display our image. We'll do cell.stream image view dot image will be equal to UI image and the data will be the actual image data. Next we'll display a branding logo which has same logic as the code we just wrote. Let's go ahead and copy it and here we'll change the string to be sec HQ branding logo and we'll just change the image view to be sponsored image view. The last asset we'll display is the sponsor name. If new asset dot name is equal to source, we'll do cell dot stream source label dot text is equal to new asset dot value. And now we've assembled all the pieces of our native ad. Let's just check for any errors. Everything seems to be okay, so let's go ahead and run our application. And here we see that we still have our old content. We have a sponsor name, a title, a branding logo, the image, and the description of our ad. And it has a little note saying sponsored down here to let the user know that this is a sponsored advertisement, followed by more of our content in one stream. Thanks for watching.